about the rest of it as we go out throughout today. But we're going to talk about there's no other gospel. My, my Bible says no other gospel, right? It starts there with no other gospel. It says, I am astonished that you are so, and I'm talking, okay, now listen, this is the word of God. I'm not talking to you directly. So if the Holy Spirit deals with you on something, then let's deal with it at the end of service, okay? But I'm just going to read this. Paul's talking to the church there that was having some problems, okay? And um, it says, I am astonished that you are so quickly de uh, deserting the one who called you by the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Eventually, some people are throwing, uh, are throwing you into confusion and trying to prevent uh, the, the gospel, to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we are or are an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let it be eternally condemned. There's only one gospel. Even if an angel shows up at your house to share something different than what I'm about to share with you today, it's not the gospel. Amen? There's one gospel. As we have already said, so now I say again, if anybody is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accepted, let him be, be eternally condemned. And I'm now trying to, am I, and, excuse me, am I now trying to win the approval of men or of God? Or am I trying to please men? If I were tr still trying to please men, I would not be a servant of Christ. Let's pray. Father, we love you so much, and we thank you for your presence here this morning. We thank you for the peace and the joy that we feel in our hearts. God, I thank you for all that you have done for us, and thank you for giving us the gift of salvation, the gift of your spirit, God. Thank you for all that you're doing. And I thank you, Lord, this morning, as I'm able to share with your people again your word. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So Paul is writing to this church, giving them, as he always does, opens up with compliments, telling his credentials, if you will, why he's qualified to do this. And we're going to go through that in just a minute in Acts chapter 9. And then he goes and says, listen, there, there's some confusion in the church. And I want to correct that confusion because there is no confusion in God. All right? All confusion comes from the enemy. And the enemy will try to confuse us about the Word of God or about church or about our Christian walk. And he throws us in confusion and we, we just get, we get despair. We're not sure what we should believe or not believe. We know we should, we should gather together, but what should we actually really believe in? And so that's what I'm going to share with you today. And the last part of that, Paul defends his call because he's, he wants to prove again why he's called to be able to share this gospel. There was confusion because some of the church was being tossed into and fro about should we, uh, uh, be, should we um, do uh, what the church of Jerusalem is doing? Should we be like them? Should we transfer into Judaism or should we actually be followers of Jesus? This was the debate. Should I be like the Jewish people or should I be a Christian? There is a separation there. And Jesus tried to share that with them. They said there's a new covenant, right? We have a, there's an old covenant and a new covenant. The new covenant now is what? Jesus was a final sacrifice for our sins. Once and for all, we're forgiven. Amen? He was a final blood that was shed for everybody. We just have to believe in him. It's not by works. It's nothing that we can earn. All we have to simply do is believe. And we're saved. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. And we, I say, wow. I, I remember the day I first believed. I shared that over and over. I believed in Jesus was the Son of God. I grew up in the Catholic Church. I was taught about Jesus. I was, you know, we barely talked about God in our home. But still, I kind of knew that Jesus was the Son of God. But I didn't believe it yet. But the day I believed, all of a sudden my life began, was, I was free from all my past. All of my sin was gone. I was a new creature in Christ. Woo! Things were amazing. Amen? So that's, that's the gospel. Then there's this power that comes that we should really embrace that is a gift from our Father. He said he'd give a good gift to those that believe. And his gift of the Holy Spirit was for us to continue the mission so we can do what God's called us to do. Now let's look up, go back and examine Paul's life and show you the authority that he had in Acts chapter 9. Let's go to Acts chapter 9. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 9. And this was Saul at this time's conversion, who we now know as Paul. Saul was on the road to Damascus. And on that road to Damascus, Jesus himself, this is after his resurrection, 
after he was crucified, after he was beaten with, after all that, he rose and he, was, he ascended into heaven, and now he came back and revealed himself to this new apostle, Saul, who is now going to be called Paul. And I want to show you, look at his conversion. And if you look at verse 4, it says they were on the road. And why was, why was Paul on the road to Damascus, first of all? He was on the road to Damascus to persecute the Christians. This new sect of believers that was not following Judaism, they were something was wrong with these people, and he's going to throw them in prison, just like they were going to when they persecuted Jesus. They were they were going to they were throwing these Christians or beheading them. They were they were they were casting them in prison, doing all these horrible things to them. And Paul was part of that. And now Paul is on the road to Damascus to go arrest some more people, and Jesus shows up in verse four. It says he fell on. The ground, and he heard a voice that said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? See? Not the people, you're persecuting Jesus, right? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. He replied, Now get up and go to the city, and you will be told what you must do. Instantly, he recognized Jesus. I mean, it was instant, like, Yes, Lord. It says here he was also struck blind at that moment, too. His heart was blinded to the truth, and his eyes were blinded physically. It says, The man were traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but they did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could not see. So they led him by his hands into Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. He saw Jesus. He was blinded. I mean, this is a, this is a person he was persecuting. He was killing Christians over this Jesus that they believed in, and he saw him. I don't know what would happen if I saw Jesus face to face. I'd definitely fall on the ground like Paul and Saul did. Amen? How would you? I mean, I'm not worthy. I don't know. Maybe I would. Maybe say, come here, brother. Come here, son. And uh, off we go. But Saul had, a, had an experience that only is recorded in the scripture. No other person has seen that, this type of experience but Paul, because uh, Saul had a mission that God wanted him to do. Because he Saul understood the Torah. He understood the Old Testament. He, know, he understood the Old Covenant. He, he, he preached it. He taught it. He was a scholar in it. But something's changing at this moment. Something different is happening. And he had an experience with Jesus. Let's look at the first part. He said, um, so in Damascus where, uh, was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision. Ananias, yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord said, told him, go to this house of um, house of Judas on straight, straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he, he had seen a man named Ananias come and place his hand on him to restore his sight. So then Ananias did exactly what the Lord told him, and he went to the, went to um, that's that place. Look at verse 15. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles. What was Paul's mission? To carry his message to the Gentiles. And the Gentiles is everybody that's not Jewish at this time, right? And it says, and it's their king. And not only to the Gentiles, but also to the kings and before the people of Israel. And also to the people of Israel. See what it says? Not only to the Gentiles, but also to the people of Israel. I will show him how he must uh, suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it, placing his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you now on the road uh, as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately something like scales had come from his eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he received the strength. So this is Paul's experience. He got, he saw Jesus, and he was told that he was, as he was filled with the Holy Spirit, that he was going to do something. Immediately, he left there, and he began to preach about Jesus. Now think about it. The same person that was coming, let's say, come to Capital City Church, the guy that was persecuting Christians, now if he show up in the building here, we'd probably like freak out a little bit, right? But then he started preaching Jesus. 
Every, all the Jewish people, all, all the Jewish leaders are like, what's going on here? Who is this guy? What? He was persecuting us, and now he's preaching Jesus. They just they didn't have a connection. And it says here, let's, I'm going to flip back over to um, Galatians. Um, it says here that Paul, after that, went away for three years into the desert. Interesting. He went away for three years because he wasn't accepted, but he knew God had called him. So he went away, not to Bible college. He didn't go to some scholars, some man-taught religion. He went to the desert to go spend time with God because he knew God put in his heart a message for the Gentiles, and he wanted to be taught from him, not from anyone else. Can you say amen? Amen. God can speak to you. Amen. God gives you power to understand the gospel. God will give you power to understand the Holy Spirit. God will give you power to do what he's called us to do. Amen. We just have to seek him. That's saying we shouldn't be taught and gather together and go through our, our discipleship class. We should do all those wonderful things. Amen. Encourage one another in the faith. But Paul was telling the church they're being deceived because what happened, they started adding things to the gospel. And let me be real bold. I just tell you, there's simple faith to believe in Jesus. There's nothing you have to do. And that's what Paul was convinced. So let me go a little bit further. It says, in the law, that I should keep the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Right? How many have ever heard of that? Sabbath day, right? We have a Sabbath day. I have a lot of friends that keep this special day. It's a Sabbath day. They have a sunrise from sun, sunset at Saturday to sunrise uh, in the morning, they have this special thing. And I'm looking at this and I'm reading this over and over. So they say, well, we got to do this and they have to do this. One of the things they said, they have to be circumcised. The Gentiles, you have to be circumcised because that's what have, we had to do in the beginning in the desert, right? So that was one of the things that they said the Gentiles had to do. It's like, wait, Paul's going like, wait a second. Wait a second here. This, this is not what God has told me to do. He said, listen, you, you don't have to follow the law because the law has now been completed by me and my death. All you have to do is believe in me. Can you say amen or oh my? Oh my amen. There's another gospel that says you have to do all these things, but the, God, the true gospel is I have to simply believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Yes. There's no works that have to be done. So how does this work out? When Paul was in the desert... I wasn't there, so this is my assumption. You were there? Glad I was there. <laughs> but I think, why, first of all, let's, let's, have, let's examine this for a second. Why was the law given? We'll find this out later in chapter 3, but why was the law given? It's a schoolmaster to us, so we know what sin is. How many know what sin is right now because the Holy Spirit is in you and reveals it to you every day, every second of the minute, every, every, every breath of your life, the Holy Spirit is there revealing to us what it is. Amen? When you cross the line, you know you cross the line. Because as a believer, the Spirit of God reveals that to you instantly. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. Or oh me, because that's what it works out to be. So the whole, we don't have to worry about, do I, because Paul goes on to tell us later on that you can't keep the whole law anyway. It's impossible. You try to keep one part, you've got to keep all of it. You can't do it. But with the Spirit in us now, we can walk and know what righteousness and holiness and peace, and we'll get into it in chapter 5, and what the fruit of the Spirit is, we can have joy, and we can be free from our sin, because now I'm not worried about all the commandments, I don't have to keep it. Because really what happened in the desert, I believe this is what happened. God began to show Paul when sin entered the world through Adam, and how the curse that spread all over the world. Men have to work by the sweat of their brow. Women will have a pain in childbirth. And the curse goes on and on and on and on. But there was a blessing that happened also. Abraham's blessing. We'll talk about that in chapter 2. There's a blessing that Abraham has that now has been restored to the world. And to the Gentiles. Which is us. So now we don't have to walk under the curse of Adam because the curse has been 
taken care of by Jesus. Jesus gave us the blessing of eternal life. Abraham was that blessing. And Abraham is willing to even sacrifice his own son. And God provided the sacrifice for him. Think about that. Abraham walked with God. And God said, take your firstborn son, the son that you waited for, and go sacrifice that son for me. And Abraham said, okay. He got some wood. He put it on his son. They traveled up to the mountainside where God told him to go. And he put, he bound his son, put him on, the, on that uh, place to be sacrificed. As he was putting the knife down, God says, stop. I know now that you'll do exactly what I asked you to do. And he provided a, 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 a sheep, a ram, for him to sacrifice that day. And that blessing of obedience was restored to us as believers now. Hallelujah. I was thinking that I've been in Madison for a long time. It's been 11 years now. And I love all my brothers and sisters at our church, different churches around Madison. I know a lot of pastors and pray for them. And I don't want to be confused, but I'm kind of simple-minded in a sense. I like to know what the Word of God says. Amen? And I know that the gospel that needs to be preached is the gospel that Paul is explaining here. It's faith in Jesus and nothing else. Amen? So let, let's go walk, let me, let's go to uh, Acts chapter 10 and show you this salvation that happens that confused even Peter at the moment because Peter, again, was preaching to the Jewish people and trying to get them to believe in Jesus. And all of a sudden he had a vision of this blanket of unclean animals. And he had it three different times. And Peter began to realize that maybe God is saying something to him that wasn't about eating food. There's something in his vision that was more, that was, that was more, uh, that had a, had a deeper meaning. And let's look at verse 9, chapter 10 of, of Acts, verse 9. It's that noon the following day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while he, the meal was being prepared, he fell in a trance. He saw heaven open and something like a large sheep uh, being let down to the earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals and, as well as reptiles um, of the earth and birds of the air. Then the voice said to Peter, this is the Holy Spirit said to Peter, get up, kill and eat. And he said, surely not, Lord. Peter replied, I never have eaten anything impure in all my life. He kept the letter of the law. Peter obeyed the law to the very end degree. He, he obeyed it. He didn't want to, he didn't want to be unclean in any way. The voice, uh, verse 15, the voice spoke to him in a second time, do not call anything impure that God has made. So you can eat shrimp, I guess. It's okay, because everybody says, you know, we have the law, so you can't eat any animals that, you know, get all these different rules, right? But God's saying, no, don't call anything I made unclean. We just pray, we ask God to bless it, and we eat it, right? Well, the only food we should eat is that, that sacrifice to animals. I mean, to idols. Excuse me, to animals. <laughs> to idols. Why don't we eat food that sacrifice to animals? Because when we tell the person that's feeding us that the food sacrifice to animal, uh, idols, uh, sorry, I got animals in my head, um, sacrifice to because it, it sears the conscience of the person giving it to you. So they'll realize, hey, I can't eat that because if you sacrifice to animal, I worship God. Oh, and they've got to realize, hey, something's different here. can't eat that. You learn a lot today. Do not call anything impure that God has made. This happened three times and immediately the sheet was broken out. So let's fast forward because now the people from Cornelius' house met Peter. They, came, they went on a journey. They're back at Cornelius' house, verse 27. Taking with them, uh, talking with them, Peter went inside and found a large gathering of people. He said to them, you are well aware that it is against the law for a Jew to associate with the Gentiles. Here Peter's stuck in the law. Right? It was against the law for a Jewish person to talk to a Gentile. But God's just busting this wide open. Everything that was of the law is taken care of now. He deleted the law, in, in a sense. It, you don't have... 
If you follow after the Spirit of God, you don't have to worry about the law. Amen? God loves everybody from the foundation of the world. He loves every people group, every nation. God loves them. And so here, Peter's realizing that, oh, the law says I shouldn't do this, but obviously your presence is in this place. It drew Peter in, and he began to share with them. Amen? And his heart was full of joy, like, oh my God, it's in the house of the Gentiles, because these were God-fearing people. They weren't part of Judaism. They just feared God. They gave to the poor. They helped people. They were God-fearing people. But they never heard the message of salvation until this moment as Peter began to share what Jesus did for them. Amen. Look at verse 34. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God has not showed favoritism. He's for everybody. Oh my goodness, hallelujah. My heart, this is my heart's desire all the time is that I realize that God is just not for a certain people. He's for every people group across the world. That he wants to see every people group come to the saving knowledge of Christ. That salvation is for the whole world. John 3.16 says, for God uh, loved the world. Amen. That's why he sent his son. Praise the Lord. Then, then uh, verse 35, but except men uh, from every nation who fear him and and do what is right. You know the message God sent to his people Israel, telling the good news of the peace through Jesus Christ, who is the Lord of all. You know that what has happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism of John uh, preached, and how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went about doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. God delivered people of sickness, right? He delivered them because they were under some kind of evil bondage, all sickness from the devil. Well, sickness came because of sin. So maybe it is if in a, in a, in a, in a uh, uh, what do you call it? A macro sense, but in a, in a micro sense, maybe not. Let's look at it this way. God wants to heal people. Amen. Amen. And Jesus provided the healing for us. How many this morning need healing? I was, I was thinking of the back row back there needs healing back there, right? Everybody, raise your hand and needs healing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, raise your hand. Like you, need, you want God to touch you right now. I believe this. This is the power that we need to walk in. See, if we continue to just speak the truth, then God will just deliver us from all our bonds and sicknesses. Amen? Come on, raise your hand. All right, let's pray together. Everybody look over here together, not to look, be embarrassed. Close your eyes. Just reach your hands towards these and have your hands raised. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, Father, we pray and believe that you provide healing for them. Father, we receive that healing in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. I receive that healing in your name. Thank you, Jesus, for providing my healing. I walk in healing today. I walk in Hallelujah. goodness. I, I walk in wholeness because of you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you've done it for me. Hallelujah. And I want you to freely give what you receive away to those that are in need. Let me say that again. What you receive today, I want you to give away. Amen? Yes. So when you meet somebody that is sick in their body or has a pain in their body, and then you pray for them just like you received it. Amen? Because that's what Jesus did. He provided you salvation, and then you give that salvation away. He provided you peace, you give that peace away. You do that through the power of the Holy Spirit, because I'm afraid to do it myself. I get like chicken. And the Holy Spirit says, go ahead. Go ahead and pray for them. Go ahead and give them that extra 20 bucks. Go ahead and just go over and meet them. Amen? The Holy Spirit is always urging us to proclaim the gospel that God, that Jesus provided for us. Amen? And we can't do it by ourselves. We need help. Amen? Let's look at the rest of the story that happened at Cornelius' house. Verse 39. We are witnesses of everything he did in the, in the, country, and of the, in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him and they, by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him from the dead. And on the third day, um, and caused him uh, to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen by us who ate and drank with him according to, uh, after he rose from the dead. So we know that he ate and drank with, with his apostles. He commanded us to preach to, to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. You're going to be judged someday, okay? Just know that. And I hope it's all good, right? Hallelujah. And the prophets uh, testified about him, 
that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sin through his name. Underline that in your Bible, right there. That everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sin through his name. Oh, how many needs forgiveness of sin today? Huh? One, Glenda, two people are honest, three, four, five, ten. thank you, yeah. Everybody's raising their hand now. Yeah, because we have a free, there's freedom in this place. Hallelujah, there's freedom to be honest. One of the things that Linda told me, there's just like a, such an honesty here. Like everybody just like shared, uh, when we had group the, uh, in here three weeks ago, people just shared their life stories and what they were struggling with. It was so easy to do here because there's no judgment here. Right, you could just share your life problems and like nobody's going to go, oh, look at that person. Yeah. We don't have that here. Why? Because the Spirit of God is here. Amen. Amen. If I was a worldly person, I would just like, look at that person. I'm better than that person, right? Look at me, I'm better. And no, because the Spirit of God is here, we're just like equal. Uh, we're just like God's sons and daughters. Amen. We love each other. No judge. Uh, no judging. You just you share, and everybody's like sharing and praying for each other. And my goodness, that's an amazing thing. We're going to be sharing uh, on the gift. We're going to share the fruits of the spirit, and we're going to share the gifts of the spirit too later on this summer, or maybe towards the fall if we get that far. We just believe that we need to walk in the spirit and learn what that is. Amen. See, Paul's saying this is the gospel. You got to have salvation by believing in Jesus Christ, but there's also the power to walk in this thing, the Holy Spirit. That's the whole gospel. We're teaching the whole thing. We're not going to teach, okay, believe, and that's it. Okay, I'm saying, I'm going to do my own thing. It's just not that way. We're commissioned, all of us, to preach, to proclaim the gospel everywhere we go. In our families, in our loved ones, in our neighborhood, in our workplace, at the gas station. You heard me say it many times. Why? Because I still believe it in my heart. It's possible for us to see the change in our city because of us. Amen? Amen? Well, it might take a little time, but you have to build relationships. That's why we did mission communities over just a Bible study. A Bible study is like, I come and receive. But when I'm a mission community, I look at the bigger picture. Right? It's not about me. Yeah, I need to learn. I need to grow in my faith. I need those things, but I need to be able to share it. And that's why we need what's happening next. Right? Now look at um, verse 43. It says, and the prophets testified of him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sin through his name. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The, circum uh, the circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. What happens when you have the power of the Spirit of God in you? You start praising God. When you speak, you begin to speak in tongues and praise God. How many have ever heard that before? This is the full gospel. See, you have salvation and then you have the power of the Spirit to do the work of God. And what happens? You begin to speak in tongues just like they did in the beginning on the day of Pentecost. Say amen. amen. See, I don't know about that the Holy Spirit stuff. Sometimes we don't, because we haven't been taught it. We're going to teach you that this is a normal part of Christian walk, is a walk in the Holy Spirit. Why do Christians struggle? This is the reason why. We don't believe the Word of God. Amen. We have to believe what the Word of God is. So I'm going to go back and reevaluate how I teach. I want you to be saved. I want you to know you're saved. I want you to know that your name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. I want you to have confidence that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. You will die for that name. There's no other name on the heaven where we shall be saved but through Jesus Christ. But then Paul, Paul Peter is saying, and Paul is saying, listen, the truth, the God, the rest of this story, the, the, the gift that the Father, not only Jesus wants to give you gifts, but the Father gives you this gift, just like salvation is the Holy Spirit. And when you do, you begin to pray in tongues, and then you get to praise Him. Hallelujah. Everything's like, okay, God, I, this is really terrible what I'm going through right now, but how, I'm going to praise you anyway. Amen. It's the Spirit of God that does it. I'm going through this yeah. really tough time in my life, but it doesn't <laughs> matter because as a believer, I have some power in me. It's called the Holy Spirit, so it doesn't yeah. matter what I'm going through. You're going to take me through it. Yes. Amen. There's victory on the other side of every situation if we just trust in the Spirit of God. So there's more. 
There's more, guys. There's more. There's much more than just receiving salvation. Even though that is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me, that God saved me from my sin. Hallelujah. That was a joyful day. I'll never forget that moment when I believed. That moment I said, yes, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. When I did that, my life changed instantly. My sins were forgiven. And then God said, I got a mission for you. I got something for you to do. Yes. I'm like, I'm afraid. I can't do this with the Spirit of God. I remember I was hearing a message on the Holy Spirit. And we, we sought the Spirit of God. We wanted more. Whatever, if it's in the Word of God, I want it. So it says it, it speaks in tongues. Like, I don't know what tongues are. Maybe we didn't then. You know, what is tongues? I mean, like, is that some weird thing? Is the Spirit of God going to grab me and start making me say stuff, you know? How does it work? No, it just, it's just like faith when I believe. I start, I remember that day, we were, Tina and I were like, okay, we, we want this. I mean, everybody's praising God, and it was a, a, a church that had probably 200 people in it. So people were praising God, they had their hands raised, they were speaking in tongues, they were worshiping God, they were praying in tongues. People were laying hands on people like, wait, let's, like, we want that too, right? So the pastor, oh, everybody wants us to, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, come up here. So he prayed for everybody, and they were like doing all sorts of stuff, and we're like, nothing's happening. I'm, like, I'm waiting for like this electricity to hit me or, or something, you know? And it's different for every people, and every person has a different experience. But I remember we said one night, we were at home, right? In Sneeds Ferry, North Carolina, and I, almost, I don't even remember the name of the little apartment we were in, but it had more cockroaches than it had people. And then it was, and I apologize to my wife all the time for putting her in places that you wouldn't want to live in, but we lived there because we could, it was like $80 a month, so you know, whatever, we saved money. Um, oh, Lord Jesus, help me. But I remember hungering for God because as I read the word, as I do it even now, I just can't get enough of it, right? I mean, you. I hunger for, I want more, 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 God, whatever, yes. I want more, I just can't, I want more, I want more, that little commercial with the little girl. Uh, <laughs> Hallelujah. I want more, and I remember saying to Tina, I said, listen, we're going to, we're going to pray tonight, we want, we're going to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we want to speak in tongues, we want whatever, we want all that God has for us, that's what my heart was, I want whatever God has, I want it, if he's given away, I'm first in line. Yeah. That's, what I, that's my attitude. I want it. And uh, so Tina went into the living room, I think, and then I went into, well, there's only two rooms in the house, so I went in the bedroom, <laughs> and she went in the other room, and uh, I remember getting, kneeling on my, beginning to kneel, and uh, actually it was in the bathroom, actually, that's where it was. I was in the bathroom, because it had, anyway, it's, it's real easy to, to pray there, you know, got something to lean on. Uh, <laughs> And I remember, I wasn't there a minute. It wasn't a minute. I knelt down in that place, and I began to speak at times, and began to praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise. We didn't stop all night long, praising God all night long. <laughs> we just praised Him and thanked Him. Hallelujah. That's what happens. Oh, the Spirit of God just brings joy and peace and love that floods your heart. It's just amazing. Paul's saying this, the gospel is this, what I just shared with you today. Salvation through Jesus and power to do His message. Amen. Is the Holy Spirit. He wants you to have that. He wants you to have more. He wants you to, you know, if you start speaking in tongues, praise the Lord for that. If you start praising Him, praise the Lord for that. All that God has, He wants to give you. Amen? There's more. He's just so much more for you to have. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to teach out of the book of Galatians over the next few weeks. And I just want to share with you Peter's, uh, uh, Paul's story. Paul went to Peter because Peter had this experience. See, Paul knew that. He goes, to, he goes to Peter and says, hey, explain this to me. Right? He didn't go, it says in, in um, verse 18. Verse 18 in Galatians 1, 18. I just want to kind of close up with this. And then pray for you guys to have more, more, more. And I think, like, not only just to have more, but like to have the desire to want more. That's yes. probably pretty cool, right? Not, okay, I, I know the word, I, I'm learning, right? I'm learning things, but I, I want just a desire to know Him more, right? Yes. And God will pour out on you so much stuff. You have so much wisdom Amen. and knowledge, not only in the Word of God, but listen to me really closely. In everything you do, yes. God will give you supernatural wisdom to deal with every yes. situation because yes. it comes, you're now you're serving Him. The Spirit of God is in you. And I don't know if you're a programmer or a 
space, whatever person you know. I, I, I forget what. And they, they went up to uh, uh, Sheboygan, but you know what? Make rockets or whatever. I mean, God will give you wisdom how to deal with every situation in your life because he, He's not concerned just about you know I'm saved and serving Him, but it's like every aspect, everything you do, He wants you to be the best. Amen. Amen. And He'll give you wisdom how to do it. The best ballerina in all the world sitting right here. Right there, you know? Who knows? God fills her up with the Spirit of God and the power, His power, and she can go and who knows what she can do. That's right. Amen? Hallelujah. Oh. Or provide all your need, all your needs. Look what happens. So three years, look what it says here in verse 18. After three years, where did Paul go for three years? He went to Bible college out in the desert. <laughs> right? Sitting on the feet of Jesus, seeking God for wisdom and what to say and how to bring this about so the Gentiles and the Jewish people alike will know that Jesus is the Lord of lords and the King of kings and every knee will bow and every tongue confess and there's power to walk this out with him. Verse 18 says, and after three years I went up to Jerusalem to get acquainted with Peter. So he went to meet Peter because Peter had, what happened at Peter in Cornelius' house is actually the gospel for us today. So that is what exactly what has to happen in our lives. We need to, the, the salvation through Jesus, and we need the power of the Holy Spirit to continue to walk it out. That's right. And he stayed with him 15 days. I saw none of the other apostles except for only James, and James was the brother of Jesus, the Lord's brother. I assure you before God that what I am writing to you is no lie. Later I went to Syria and... Um, Caesarea, I was personally unknown to the churches of Judah that are in Christ. They only heard the report. The man who formerly persecuted us are now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy. And they praise God because of me, because of him, right? Because they were, he was a persecutor of the church and now he's preaching uh, Jesus Christ. So what's the moral of the story today? What can I get out of this? What should I take home with me? First, one, salvation is found in no other but Jesus. You can't follow the law. You can't follow traditions. You, there's none of that. It's only in Jesus. You can't earn this salvation. It's only through Christ Jesus. And in Christ, as we share in Matthew 28, that we have a mission to baptize people in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen? And teaching them all that God taught. So everything that Jesus taught, even, that's why they, the Jews hated Jesus. Because he's like, listen, the law that you're following, you're trying to follow the letter of law, but you can't. And they were mad at him. They, they would try to kill him. They tried to, and if you follow uh, Paul's life, they tried to kill him too. The Grecian Jews tried to kill Paul because he was questioning the law. The religious norm. Yes. You want to break the religious norm? You follow the Holy Spirit. Amen? And if you don't understand the Word of God, guess what? The Holy Spirit's going to teach you this. Amen. Amen? The Holy Spirit will teach you all these things. Yeah. For me, I mean, I love to see when people get saved and man, their lives change. There's no greater joy than see a sinner come to know Jesus. I mean, wow. And I think, like, God just blessed me that I could even be in that moment to share salvation with yes. people. I just, I don't know, it's like for a pastor, for, I mean, not even a pastor, even before I became a pastor, just the joy of a, as a believer sharing, a beggar sharing food with another beggar, and then they get saved, you know. I mean, I just was nothing, and, and God used me, and I just, I mean, it's, it's, there's so much joy. And then from, from, from there to see a person transform, from their old life to their new life. It's just amazing. We can't do that by ourselves. We need the Holy Spirit to help us. Amen. Amen. Yep. And we begin to transform into the very image of Christ. And then the mission of preaching the gospel is just part of our nature. It's who it's what we're supposed to do. It's not like, oh, that's that's why, see, that's why the God, the true gospel, this is so amazing because every one of us are ministers. Of it's not just me and Andy and Tina and the rest of the ministry. It's not us. It's every one of us have a responsibility to share the gospel. I can't do it. No, we can't do it of our own power. We can't. But God will give us that power through His Holy Spirit. That's why the Holy Spirit came. 
Amen. Amen. And Paul shared the whole, the whole gospel. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You want more? Yes. Uh, you want more? Do you want more than what you already have? Yes. Huh? You want more of him and revelation of him in your life? Want more power? Like, I mean, think about this. This is my favorite, one of my favorite stories. Peter and John on their way to the temple to pray, met a beggar, yeah. cripple man, begging, please, alms, alms, we need, you know, he's begging. And Peter says to him, he says, silver and gold have I not, but such that I have, in the name of Jesus, rise up and healing came to that man. And he gave glory to Jesus. Well, they tried to bring and and praise Peter and John and give them a position of authority. They said, no, no, no. It's not, we didn't do it. Jesus, the man that you guys crucified, is the one who did this healing. Amen? And anyway, we, we, they begin to pray. I mean, that's a natural thing to happen when God gives you victory over a situation in your life. Hallelujah. Don't you want to be happy all the time? Yeah. Huh? Have joy in your life. We'll talk about that in chapter 6. I mean, just happiness and joy, even though we're going through some junk. Amen. Jesus is on the throne. Amen. Hallelujah. And he loves you. You want more this morning? Why don't we do this? If you want more, just stand up where you're at. Just stand up where you're at.